Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Tanari and it is by IDW Games. It plays two to four players, or I should say three to four. It's ages, what, eight and up, 10 and up, takes about a half an hour or less. And it plays basically as you trying to catch fish. You're a boat, you're moving around trying to catch fish, and you're working together with your opponents to make sure that you score the most points. It's a very simple set collection style game until the point where your fish uh, can no longer be caught because your boat can't catch any more fish around it, in which case the game will end, you'll tally the points in front of you, and whoever has the most points, plus the points to the player to their left added together, will be the winner of the game, Tanari. Interesting, unique, different, maybe? Let's go ahead and take a look down below, I'll show you the setup, I'll show you how it plays, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So here we have the game Tanari all set up and ready for as many players as you'd like. It plays two, three, or four players. And basically what you're going to get in the game is the game board. These plastic tokens that have a front and a back that fit on each of these different little hexagonal areas. As well as a boat. And how it works is you're going to select the first player. That's the player who last went fishing. Then the player to their right is going to select which side of this is going to be where the starting player is going to be. But before that, you're going to go ahead and flip all these tokens over. And that's because you, hopefully you shuffled them and then you dealt them out randomly. So you never know what you're going to get and, and in what order, basically. Now, I will talk about these pieces as we do this. So there are basically three or four different starting colors. There's four. There's yellow, there's green, there's red, and there's blue. These are the basic fish in the game, and they're the ones that are going to score you points based on how many you can get in the game. The more of the same color fish you can get, the better. That's how you want to be. As, as a master fisherman, you basically want to catch the basically the same type of fish. These are trash. You don't want trash. They give you minus five points at the end of the game. Shrimp over here are hard to get, but they, you want a lot of them. And if you have the most at the end of the game, you'll score eight. And anybody else who has any that does they don't have the most. So if I had three and you had two and somebody else had two, I'd be the only person to score eight points. There's this times two fish bonus, which means if you get this, you're going to be setting it to, your, to the side along with hopefully one of your other normal colored fish, which will double the points scored by all of those fish of that specific color at the end of the game. You're also going to have these action tiles and the specific special pink guy, but we'll get into him in a second. This is going to allow you to swap tiles on the board when you land on this specific space. This will let you re remove any tile you want on the board. And there's one other one that lets you steal fish from an opponent. You give one to them, they, you take one from them, and that will end there. This here is the like, Master Marlin Chief Pinky Fish. And the only way you can get this is if your boat is one space away from it and there is an opening there. So you could actually get any of these guys here or this one over here by jumping one space. But I'll explain that in a second. So I'm going to go first, and you're going to be the second player. So you're going to choose which side here that I start on. And uh, you say, OK, let's start over here. I'll say, OK, so I'll go ahead and get to move. I can move to any adjacent space I want, provided there's no uh, limitations. This is the one main limitation in the game. So I'll take this green fish, and this will be my side. Then you say, OK, well, I want blue. So you'll take your blue. And then I'll keep going. Well, I want a green one here. And you say, well, I want a blue one. I'm going to take this one over here. And it's like, OK, well, I can now take any of these four. And so I'll take a blue one to stop you from continuing to get blue here. And just in case you do get this double, my blue will be worth more. Maybe you want to start gathering over here. So you'll take this one here and hopefully you have the most shrimp at the end of the game, forcing me to take this or I can go this way and remove a specific type of fish. So what I can do is I can go over here and I can remove any one I want. And the game ends fairly quickly because what happens is once this isn't able to move anymore, the game's over. So if I take this and I remove this, the game will basically end and we're going to tally up points. And in this case, he would win because he'd have more shrimp than me, which would be eight points plus these two, which I think scores three, putting him at 11. And this here is going to give me my three points plus one, which is four, and I would lose. So that might not be the best decision. Maybe I'll go over here and then he would go over here. And then I would say, okay, I'm going to take this doubler. That's going to make all of my green fish and any other green fish in the game double points at the end of the game. And now he's going to continue. Maybe he'll take this one to guarantee his eight points, or hopefully guarantee his eight points. And then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I don't know, I will probably swap fish with him because I don't think I'm going to get these shrimp now. So this is just going to disappear. I'm going to go ahead and give him this shrimp and take one of his blue ones over here. And then it's his turn. He can go over here and end the game, taking this, which will score him eight plus one plus one, nine and ten. And I'd score my three times two, which is six. 
seven, eight, nine points, and he'd actually win. So this would probably be a great move for him. Thusly, it's my turn, and now I can't reach anything else. That means that basically everything around me has been taken. So sometimes it's best to end the game uh, when you think you're going to win. What's in a two-player game is fine. Basically, you add up your points and you add up your opponent's points, and whoever has the most points is the winner in Tenari. But what makes it interesting in a three and four-player game is if you had another player here, let's say that they had this, then their points are going to be added to specific players. So you're going to add the points for the player on your left. So in this case, I would get my three times two, which is six, plus three more is nine. And then I would add all of this person's points up as well. And this would be three, six, nothing here, and uh, seven points. And then he would add seven plus eight, nine, ten points, so he gets 17, and so on and so forth. So you're actually going to be working together with your opponents to make sure that the person next to you scores as best as they can, but not as good as you. So at the end of the game, if you have 10 and 7 versus 7 and 6, you're going to get more points at the end, and you're going to win. And that's how three and a four-player function, but every otherwise everything else is the same. The only thing I didn't show you really is these guys here. If you take them, you get minus five points at the end of the game. And if you were, oh, I don't know, right here, you can simply go to this one, or you can be sneaky and take this wonderful pink... Um, uh, Marlin here, which is going to score you five points at the end of the game. Otherwise, that's pretty much how you play the game Tanari. Very, very simple, but very strategic because it's not always about making a lot of points and choosing the best move for yourself, but also about choosing the best move for your opponents. So that's how you play the game Tanari. Fairly simple, and as you can see, it gets really interesting with three and four players because of the fact that you're working together with your opponent to your left and trying to set them up for the best move that they can get. As long as you score more points than they do at the end of the game, that's probably what's going to do good for you. A couple caveats. This double times fish thing, remember, it's double for all the fish of your choosing, provided you have a fish, and anybody else's as well. So if you have one red and it's attached to this, and somebody else has three, they get a lot more points. In addition, the more fish you have a specific color, it gets uh, incremental in points. It goes 1, 3, I don't know, or 1, 3, 7, 9, 15, something like that. So the more the specific type of fish you get, the better. Uh, if you swap and you don't have a fish, you just discard any token you can't use. And these big boys, remember, you have to be able to jump one space, and that space has to be empty in order to get these guys. It's very unlikely people are going to set you up with it, unless they know that they're going to uh, benefit from it greatly to give you that specific amount of points. Overall, this game is a lot of fun. There's almost no chance involved other than just the setup and who starts the game, but because your opponents kind of dictate where they're going to go, where you're going to go when the game is going to end, or where you get to choose that as well, it sets up a lot of unique styles of how long the game will last based on the board state, and how much people want to be friendly to you until the point where they want the game to be over because they're happy with what they have. And then you have other players who are like, no, don't end it, I'm not close enough. But it is a unique abstract game. This one's a lot of fun. I would not say it's a two player game. It's fine at two players. It's, you know, you go back and you're, it's basically just tab, uh, c collecting, set collection game. Whoever has the better set wins. But with three and four is where it becomes really interesting. It becomes very unique and it puts in an additional perspective to the game because now you have to worry about your opponents and how they're playing, where they're playing, and what they have. Because it's not just about you when it comes to these three and four player games with Tenari. And that's what makes the game shine. Uh, this is a Bruno Fanuti game, and uh, I like most of his games. This one is one of my favorites, just because it's so quick. It has that beautiful fishing theme. I love fishing theme games, and this one does it for me. So simple. Uh, it's something you can teach in basically two or three minutes, and you can just, it, it could be a filler game, or you could play this throughout the entire night. It's one of those games that you can keep playing if you want. Uh, I think the people who aren't going to like this game are people who want a more aggressive style of play. This one does have certain maneuvers to be aggressive, Specifically in two players, if you if you like that if that kind of person you want to play a two player game that's aggressive, then that's kind of where it's at for you. But the three and four puts a twist on the game, and so for those type of people who don't like that twist, they're not going to be as into the game as I am specifically. But that specific mechanic in this game puts it above a lot of other abstracts I've played because it makes me think about my opponents as allies when they're really not. Overall, Tanari is an excellent game. It's one I strongly urge you to check out. Take a look at it for yourself and see if you like it. All you uh, abstract people who like set collection, this is going to be one for you for sure. I highly enjoyed it, and pretty much everybody else I played, provided they're not playing two-player.